Hey guys, welcome back to Bible Bears. I'm Ryder Cullison. Disney has a cartoon, an animated show aimed at children called Owl House. And in this show, uh, a young girl travels to another world to become a witch. Earlier in the seasons, apparently, I don't know how long the show has been on the air, but she was a typical uh, young girl. I believe she's 14. She had interest in boys. Now she has developed an interest in another girl. And she has danced with this girl, apparently, <clears throat> and hopes to invite this girl to that show's version of prom. So clearly, there is an attraction there. Now, no surprise, turns out that the character is intended to be bisexual. Now, I don't believe they call her that on the show, but clearly, she has interests in both boys and girls. The show's creator is bisexual. She has openly tweeted about this, confirmed. Yes, that character is bisexual. I've always wanted to write a bisexual character. Now, I'm not going to debate whether this is appropriate really for Disney cartoons or whether our kids should see this. I mean, people who are gay, who have same-sex persuasion, exist. And we can try to pretend that they don't exist. We can turn a blind eye to it. But the fact is, they're there. So I'm wondering how we should react to Disney or any other what program, whether it's Nickelodeon, aimed at children, how we should react to them promoting what appears to be what Christians would consider to be immoral behavior. Um, and so, look, in this cartoon, they're not doing anything but dancing. And maybe they go to prom, or some end up going to prom, or something like that. It's not horrendous. However, we don't want our kids to feel that that's acceptable. So how should Christians react to this? Should we yell and shout? Should we protest? Should we boycott the mouse house? Should we just accept it? What I want to press home to a lot of people, and I get this all the time as someone in my community who regularly attends church, who teaches Sunday school, people who don't uh, typically attend church routinely as I do, might ask me questions about homosexuality. What's your church's stance on homosexuality? They never ask me what my church's stance is on lying or any type of intimacy uh, outside of marriage or on greed or on lust or anything. It's on homosexuality. And do you know why that is? It's because homosexuality is a sin that they don't struggle with. They don't want to talk about the sins that they struggle with, only about the sins that they don't struggle with. So here's a great quote. Uh, Dr. Preston Sprinkle, he's the president uh, for the Center for Faith, uh, Sexuality and Gender says, we are most likely to vilify the sins we are least likely to commit. So for many Christians, and there are gay Christians, but for the majority of Christians, homosexuality is a sin that they don't struggle with, and so it's easy to go after those who commit that particular sin. So while we may want to rage and yell at any show creator that creates a show with a gay character just saying, oh, they're being progressive, or oh, they're being woke, they're putting more gay characters in there, or just attacking those who are gay in general, what we're basically doing is trying to make ourselves feel better. Let me, let me elaborate on that. All of us are sinners. The Bible is very clear on that, on that. We've all sinned, we've all fallen short of the glory of God. And yet, we typically gloss over our own sins and vilify those who commit the sins we're least likely to commit because that makes us feel better inside. That's really what all social media is about these days. When people attack someone else, they're trying to feel better about themselves, about their place in the world by putting someone else down. This does not mean 
And anyway, then I'm suggesting that we do not continue to share the truth of the gospel. And we know what the truth of the gospel is. God's purpose for us, he did not intend for people of the same gender to be attracted to each other in an intimate fashion. This does not mean at all that two people of the same gender cannot love one another. There's, if you read Samuel, the Old Testament, David and Jonathan, Jonathan was the son of Saul, he and David were best friends. The Bible is very clear that they loved one another. Saul, Jonathan's father, wanted to kill David. And Jonathan disobeyed his father's wishes and rescued and saved, made sure David stayed safe because he loved David. And after Jonathan died, David made sure to take care of Jonathan's son. It's very clear. There's nothing wrong with loving someone of the same gender. It's when we take that relationship uh, into the realms of intimacy, which God is also clear on that nobody outside of marriage should be going into those areas, okay? We are most likely to vilify the sins we are least likely to commit. So Dr. Sprinkle gives us a great example of how we can kind of relate to those who are struggling with sin, like, like homosexuals, and how we can relate to them. Think about it. Jesus called Matthew and Zacchaeus to him. He chose them to be disciples. They were tax collectors. Now, back then, tax collectors were vilified. The Pharisees likely hated them for their sins as much as many of us despise, might despise homosexuals today. I don't despise homosexuals. Let me just make that clear. And yet God chose them. He wasn't affirming their sin. He was simply saying, follow me and through obedience, you will overcome your sin. Uh, I watch a podcast called The Rubin Reports with Dave Rubin. I like the Rubin Report. Dave Rubin is uh, a, a man, of course. He's gay. He's married. I watch his show. I'm not affirming his sin. Ben Shapiro, who's many of you, if you're conservative, you're probably very familiar Ben Shapiro. He's an Orthodox Jew. Follows it to the letter. He's been on Dave Rubin's show many times. He's not affirming Dave Rubin's marriage. Ben Shapiro has been very vocal when asked by Dave Rubin that whether he supports or does not support the marriage and Ben Shapiro says, I don't support the marriage. Rubin asked him, if I invited you to an uh, anniversary party to celebrate my wedding anniversary, would you attend? And Ben Shapiro said no, because that would be a party specifically to celebrate your union, which according to my faith, I oppose, so I would not attend that. However, if it was a birthday party or just a cookout, yes, absolutely. That answer was totally fine with Dave Rubin. Why? Because he's a sensible human being. I love this quote. We don't break the commands of God. We break ourselves on them. We don't break the commands of God. We break ourselves on them. We need to be careful when we share the gospel, when we share the truth of God's love, that we do so with gentleness and respect. Look, my kids are too old to be watching Disney cartoons, but even if they weren't, likely I wouldn't let them watch that cartoon. But if they did, I could just have a simple conversation with them and explain the truth of the gospel and what's against the gospel. But this does not mean I'm going to rail against Disney. It does not mean I'm going to rail against the show's creators. It does not mean I'm going to say this is just another feather in the cap of woke progressivism. 
or loose morals, we know the world is decaying. We know things are falling apart a little bit, but that does not mean we can continue to be a light that shines through all this and loves everybody. I'm a liar. I'm a sinner. I'm a blasphemer. I'm an idolater. I've done all sorts of things that I'm not proud of, and I will continue to do all sorts of things I'm not proud of. And I expect, hopefully, that my Christian brother will continue to love me as we are to love others. Gay people exist. Will you vilify them because you don't share their sin? Or will you allow them to crash and break on your love as often as is necessary? Guys, thank you for watching. If you like this video, please click like, subscribe, and share. Please comment below. Am I way off? Should I be protesting Disney? Should I be more up in arms? Am I not being a good enough Christian by denouncing homosexuality? Or at least by not vilifying it? Now, I'm not saying homosexuality is proper. And I'm not at all saying this is according to God's plan. According to God's plan, intimacy should be in the confines of marriage alone. Period. Okay? But for those who are not following that, we cannot attack, we cannot vilify. So perhaps I'm wrong. Maybe you have a different way of approaching it. I'd love to hear your comments. Put them below. Otherwise, I love you. Have a great week.